I've started to use a library called Type GraphQL and one of the projects I've been working on lately, and I've been really enjoying it. Now this is a project or library that when I first came across it, I actually didn't really like the look of it. The syntax was a little off-putting to me, but using it more and actually digging into it, I'm really enjoying it now. So I wanna go over a brief description of what it does and then kind of jump into three reasons why it's been fantastic when I've been using it. So first off, let's look at the getting started. What even is this library that we're talking about here? So usually when you're setting up a GraphQL schema, it's gonna look something like this. So you're gonna be defining types and then you add uh, what the values of those types are or the uh, types are of the types. So the idea with type GraphQL is instead of writing your types like this, which you're all used to, uh, is writing TypeScript classes. So here we can see the class and again, you'll see that the types pretty much match one to one. Um, and then you add some things on top of it. In this case, decorators. So here we just add decorators to the class and this basically exposes it to type GraphQL and tells it you want these fields to be uh, GraphQL types. So this is what the equivalent type would look like and we can see it's just annotated with at de decorators. So then the next thing that's involved with this is uh, taking this to the next level of resolvers. So here we can see multiple resolvers. We'll just take a look at this one real quick. Um, here we are annotating it with a query. So we know this is a query uh, type or is within the query type. Um, and here you specify what it returns. In this case, it's using a recipe as the return type. And we saw that recipe up here, just a class. And uh, then here we have an argument, right, that the query takes an ID We'll notice it has a TypeScript type here. Um, and then also the name of the, the query itself is called recipe. And so what's happening here is we're basically doing two things in one. We're defining the GraphQL uh, type and like what the GraphQL schema is gonna look like through decorators um, and through these classes. But at the same time, we're also getting TypeScript types from it um, and this is the syntax, again, that at first I was a little off put by, but using it, it's actually really nice. And this is the first thing that I've been really enjoying is having a single place where I have both the TypeScript types and the GraphQL types um, and using them both. Uh, so being able to just change it in one place and then it updates all over is really nice. Now before what I was using was I would use the types here right, the GraphQL types or your GraphQL schema and generate all the TypeScript types from that and then use those. So now being able to just connect them um, and use them directly like this and be able to specify the TypeScript types and the GraphQL types at the same time has been really nice and it just feels a little simpler to use. Um, and then the next thing is the integration with TypeArm. So right now this is what an entity looks like for me in one of my projects for TypeArm. Um, and you'll notice we also have kind of double decorators here. So I'm mixing this with type GraphQL and type form here. So here's a code review post. This is an entity. And here what I'm doing is uh, I'm basically reusing this class for both type form and type GraphQL. So I'm specifying I would like this ID field to be exposed through GraphQL. And also I'd like this to be a primary generated column for my database, right? And so I can go through and basically I have these fields that I can expose. Now you'll notice all these fields here, at least, I'm both exposing to the GraphQL schema and they're stored in my database. Um, but you, as you know, you don't always wanna have a one-to-one -one mapping of your schema in your database. Uh, so what that looks like, as we can see below, for example, the updated at type or a field I'm not exposing in my GraphQL schema uh, because I don't have an at field decorator above it. And then likewise, I have this field called number of questions and this is only a GraphQL type. It is a computed type um, and it's not stored in my database so I don't have a field. And so what's nice about this is having it in kind of this same place is usually what would happen is I would come up here to my type, so like type recipe, and I would have an entity called recipe. And let's say I update a field in my database, I then go over to my GraphQL schema and I have to update the type here as well. So now all I have to do is go over to my entity and let's say I no longer want to have a repo field and I just remove it and now it's going to get rid of the GraphQL type 
and the database column at the same time, which is going to be very nice. It's been very convenient to be able to visualize that and have it all in one place um, has been pretty sweet. So then the third reason, and this is really the most powerful reason for me, um, is being able to basically create these higher order resolvers. So what this means is being able to programmatically create uh, resolvers. So here's an example that I have a find or create resolver and we can see what this looks like if we click on it. And it's probably gonna look like total nonsense if you're not used to type GraphQL. Um, but basically what this is doing is I take in all the information that I need to know. So for example, which entity that I'm dealing with, what fields I need to look for, uh, and what I wanna call it, at least like with the suffix. And so for example here, I'm gonna call it find or create, and then I add on code review post. So this is gonna create a mutation that finds or creates code review posts. And the idea here is I'm gonna be creating a very similar resolver finding or creating multiple different types of entities. So I might want to find or create a user, find or create a recipe. And so instead of creating two different resolvers, I create this like higher order resolver and I just pass in what's different between the two of them. And that's gonna be the entity. Now, of course, this doesn't work all the time. And of course I have over here some entities or not entities, but resolvers, which I manually write out, right? Um, so this one in this case just is too specific and I just wrote it out manually. Um, but a lot of times you're going to be sharing some kind of resolver code between two different resolvers and being able to, and more than just two, multiple resolvers you want to be consistent. It's kind of nice to have one that you can use here. And this is going to affect the outputted GraphQL schema as well. So that's going to be super nice. It's not just the logic, which it is sharing that as well but it's also sharing the outputted GraphQL schema you can change. So being able to kind of control those two is super cool with a function. Now this is something I've just kind of tapped the surface of and have been playing around with it, but I think it has a ton of potential and you really can't do something like this easily um, the other way. When you're creating the schema with a string, it's way more complex to try to do this sort of thing. Uh, but when your schema is a TypeScript class, it's a lot easier to create this with code and create these higher order resolvers. Anyway, if you haven't tried out TypeGraphQL and you're using TypeScript, I highly recommend giving it a try.